In this section, our objective is to be able to use trig ratios to solve for side lengths in right triangles. Let's begin by recalling the three trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember we used so, ka, toa to help us do this. So, S, O, H, to remember sine of angle D is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite side over hypotenuse. You can do the other two. Go ahead and fill it in and come back when you're done. Ka, toa, and there we have it. Now we're going to apply it to finding side lengths. To find side lengths, we've got these three steps. First, label the sides from one acute angle. Remember when we say label the sides, we mean hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Then write a trig equation using a side you have and a side you need. We'll see how to do that in the examples to come. Finally, we'll solve the equation, making sure that our calculator is in degree mode. That's very important. Let's take a look at the first example. Write two equations, two equations that could be used to solve for x in the same triangle. Now, it looks like I gave you two triangles, but really, I just want you to be able to label them differently. So in the first triangle, we're going to look from this acute angle and label the appropriate sides. First, we use our right angle as an arrow to point to the hypotenuse. This side right here across from the right angle is hypotenuse. So let's label that hypotenuse. Then from our acute angle, we look opposite from it. And that side opposite, we label opposite. Next to this acute angle, we label that adjacent. So there we've labeled our sides according to this acute angle of 78 degrees. Now, anytime we do trig, we want to write so ka toa. So we do that first, so ka toa. Now remember the other second step. After we labeled the sides, now we write a trig equation using a side you have and a side you need. So one we have and one we need. Where are those sides? Four, that's one that we have, and X is one we need. So I need to use adjacent and hypotenuse. The opposite, no. This has opposite, and this has opposite. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So from this angle of 78 degrees, I can write cosine of 78 degrees equals adjacent comes before hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. And there's my first equation. Now, the direction said write two equations that could be used to solve for x. So in this other picture, I would be doing the exact same thing if I use the 78 degrees. So instead of looking from this angle, I'm going to look from the other acute angle. Now, I don't know how much that is, but I can find it. Remember, the two acute angles in a right triangle add up to 90 degrees. So first, I'm going to say 90 minus 78 to get that missing angle measure. That's 12, so this missing acute angle is 12 degrees. Now, I'm going to look from this acute angle. I always start with the hypotenuse because it's always the same no matter what. Using the right angle as an arrow, I'm pointing to this side right here. So this is my hypotenuse. From the 12 degree acute angle, I look opposite, and that's this side. Then the last side, or the side that's touching the 12 degree angle, is adjacent. Now, again, I'm using trig, so again, I'm going to write so ka toa and figure out what to use. So remember we said, use a side that we know, that's the four, and a side that we don't know, 
that's the X. That's O with H this time, not adjacent, not the A, here's an A, not the A. Opposite and adjacent, that's sine. So I'm going to write sine of 12 degrees equals opposite and adjacent, opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite is four over hypotenuse, which is X. So the first thing we were supposed to do is done. Write two equations. Both of these equations can be used to solve for X in the same triangle. Notice nothing different was given. I just have two different ways that I could solve it. Now let's talk about how to solve it and we'll round appropriately. So I rewrote this equation so that I could say that here is a fraction over here is not a fraction, and if I don't see a denominator, we know we can always make it a fraction where the denominator is one. So now I have fraction equals fraction. I have a proportion. How do we usually solve proportions? We cross multiply. So we would multiply this times this, and this times this. Now before I go and do that, I want to recall that when I cross multiply, I multiply those things together and it doesn't matter where they are located to multiply them, meaning the X could be here and the cosine 78 degrees could be here. Because that makes it more useful to solve the equation, I'm going to use that property of interchanging those numbers so that it makes it easier to solve. So instead of cosine 78, I put the X up here. And instead of X down here, I put cosine of 78 degrees. Now please, every time you write that angle in here, you put the degrees. That'll help you remember to use degree mode. Now I don't really need the over one because X divided by one is the same as just X. My point here is, when X is in the denominator, we're going to divide. So now we take our calculator and we type, well, wait a minute, let's go to mode and see if we're in degree mode. I am, so I'm good to go. Now I type it all at once, four divided by cosine 78, close the parentheses, enter. The direction says round to the nearest hundredth. Always pay attention to the direction. Hundredth means two decimal places. So I'm gonna look at two numbers past the decimal point, one, two. The number after is big enough to round that three to a four. So 19.24. So let's write that. X is approximately 19.24. And there's our second answer. So remember to look for how to round. Hundredth means two decimal places. Now be careful, because it won't always say how many decimal places. It might use the word hundredths or tenths or thousandths. You have to know what that means. Let's try this one. Sine of 12 degrees equals four over X. Switch the places when X is in the denominator so that we are dividing by the trig ratio. Now we go to our calculator and type in 4 divided by sine of 12. 4, I'm going to have to scoot this over, divided by sine 12, close parentheses, enter. Notice we get the exact same thing because we were given the same problem, we just chose to look from a different angle. So again, I can write X is approximately 19.24. Make sense? Let's try a few more and you'll, it'll, you'll start to get used to it. Find the missing side length of each right triangle using trigonometry round to the nearest tenth. What does tenth mean? One decimal place. So step one, look at our acute angle and label the sides opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Always start with that right angle, look across from it because it's always the same. There's hypotenuse. From our acute angle, across is opposite, this side is opposite, and then next to it is the side adjacent. 
Now we're using trig, so I'm going to write so ka toa. We have to pick a side that we have, that's the 12, and a side that we need, that's the x. O, A, that goes for tangent. So now I write tangent, the angle from which I'm looking, 68 degrees equals O before A. O is the x, A is the 12. Now notice, that this time the x is on top. So we don't have to do any interchanging to get x by itself. But we do have to get rid of the divided by 12. So I'm just going to rewrite this so that I don't have to work with my original equation. I can show my step on the new equation. To get the 12 that's divided to go to the other side, we do the opposite. Multiply times 12 to both sides, and it's gone from this side. Now, x will be by itself, and it's 12 times the tangent of 68 degrees. Now I go to my calculator. 12 times tangent 68, close the parentheses, the nearest tenth, one number after the decimal point, and the zero that's after keeps that a 7, 29.7. X is approximately 29.7. Good. So back to that note. Notice it says when we solve the equation, we multiply when X is on top. We divide when X is on the bottom. If you have your highlighter with you, go ahead and highlight that because that's going to be really helpful to remember multiply x on top, divide for x on the bottom. Let's go back to that problem we're looking at, see the x is on the top, and we multiplied. In the previous problem, see the x is on the bottom, and we divided, divided. Let's go try another one. starting by labeling the sides. Maybe you can pause the video, try it yourself, come back and see how you did. From our right angle, looking across, there's our hypotenuse. From our acute angle, looking across, and that's opposite. Next to, that's adjacent. I'm using trig, so I write so ka toa. Let's see. What I have is the 16. What I need is the x. O with h. That's O with h. So let's write our equation. Sine of 58 degrees, there's our angle, equals O over h. O is 16 h is x. See the x is on the bottom, so I do interchange. Put x on top, divide by the sine of 58 degrees. Pull out my calculator, 16 divided by sine of 58, and it said round to the nearest tenth. So the 8, next to it is a 6, makes that 8 go to a 9, 18.9. X is approximately 18.9. In this last example, notice I need to find two things. So I'm going to have some choices. We don't have to do anything different. We start by labeling the hypotenuse. There it is, hypotenuse. Now, we have a choice. Always, we can find the other acute angle and label from that one, but I usually like to just label from the one they gave me. So from this angle, I have this side is opposite and this side next to adjacent. Now we're using trig, so let's write so ka toa. And let's find one thing at a time. Always use one side that we have and a side that we need. Now we need both the x and the y 
doesn't matter which one we find first. Let's go ahead and find the Y first. O and A, that would be TOA. So let's write tangent 40 degrees equals opposite before adjacent. Opposite says Y, adjacent says 8. Now, remember when Y is on top, we multiply times 8 times 8. So I can write Y equals 8 times the tangent of 40 degrees. Go to my calculator, 8 tangent 40, 6.7. Y is approximately 6.7. Don't forget to also do the X. Now X is the H. Always use a side that we have and a side that we need. Now we could use the Y side because we just found it. However, we had to round to get it. I'd rather use a more exact answer. Plus, maybe that answer is not correct. And then I'm using an incorrect answer to try to get another side. So I'm going to use this time the 8 adjacent to find the x hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. Cosine of the angle 40 degrees equals a over h. Adjacent is 8, hypotenuse is x. Remember when x is in the denominator, we divide. x equals, interchange those, 8 over cosine of 40 degrees. Go to our calculator. 8 divided by cosine 40, 10.4. The 4 is too small to make that a four, 5, so 10.4 it is. x approximately 10.4. Now always ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, the hypotenuse is supposed to be the biggest, so if this is about 6 and this is about 8, it makes sense that this would be about 10. Remember the triple 6, 8, 10? Now that should make even more sense. Go ahead and take a few minutes to write a summary. Compare and contrast finding side lengths using trig to finding angle measures using trig. Remember in the last section, we used trig to find angle measures. This section, we're using it to find side lengths. What did we do similar? And what did we do differently? See you in class.